oppression is much worse than ever and more people you have in jail than two years ago. If you are not ruled by a democracy that respects all parties, that has a proper system, you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. Since 2011, an uprising in the tiny Gulf state of Bahrain has been met with what Amnesty International calls a continuous downward spiral of repression. Protesters claim nightly rallies are met with police violence, tear gas and live gunfire. The government claims reforms are underway and that protesters are fueled by sectarianism. Nabil Rajab, president of the Bahrain Centre for Human Rights and Bahrain's most famous dissident, has been at the centre of the uprising since it began. He has been arrested and claims to have been beaten by police. He was released last May, having served two years of a three-year sentence. All the, all the arrests, it's all about my Twitter account. Then I was arrested by masked man. I was sentenced for three years by court. You must have thought about giving up. No, no, no. Even the British Embassy in Bahrain asked my lawyer if I can guarantee them I'll keep quiet, they will work to my, for my release. But only if you promise to keep quiet? If I promise to keep quiet, I said no. I don't bargain in the values and principles that I'm fighting. We have now 4,000 more or less people behind bar, sentenced from one year to 120 years. Doctors, uh, lawyers, uh, academics behind bar. Many people were tortured to death. Today there is a law, you cannot criticize the king who does have all the power in his hand. I could end up in jail for seven years for doing so. And there are people now behind bar for criticizing the king. You can't do that. The British government is totally behind the dictators, totally against our movement. And can you describe what benefits Britain gets from supporting the dictatorship? Those ruling family are guaranteeing them the interest. They can buy their silence by money. They need our petrol. They need the, uh, us to buy their arms. You know, when I read that Saudi Arabia or Bahrain or other countries were buying all these fighter jets and tanks, it, it never quite made sense to me. But you're saying those sales by the silence of the... I think they're buying this airplane for their kids to play with. Otherwise, what do they do with this airplane? To silence the Western government. And the British government have been questioned about it, and they've said they believe that the government of Bahrain is committed to reform. What do you say to that? If you see what they promised, they always talked about reform. But if you see the reality, you'll see a setback. Day by day, things have become much worse. Some of the foreign office, I think, said sometimes your principles and your interests clash. They always, their interest in our region, uh, but they got nothing to do with principle. How you want the international community and public opinion believe in what you say as supporting democracy when you're ignoring the struggle of this part of the world? You're seeing people getting killed and you keep justifying that. That's the sad part of our revolution. A hundred years from today, this will be a black history for this Western government. If you are not ruled by a democracy that respects all parties, that has a proper system, you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. I want to raise the awareness among the uh, public because we are paying the price of their double standard. Many people have been killed. Thousand people left the country. Thousand people are behind bar, but the revolution did not stop. So as soon as they got anywhere near the police station, two or three riot vans came forward and fired uh, canisters of tear gas. Everyone ran straight away, but still, it's burning the eyes, the throat, the nose. And this is happening every night for the last three years. 